Hey YouTube, today we'll be building a small chassis using ACF and precision alignment. Okay, let's get started. To start with, you're going to need to spawn some props. I'm using S-Props for this tutorial, which is an excellent prop pack, and I highly recommend that you go and download it. So for our base prop, we're going to be using a 48 by 96 by 3 plate. This is available in the menu. Here, one of these. For the four blocks above the wheels, I'll be using 12 by 12 by 3 blocks, which are available here. And for the steering bar, I'm going to be using a 6 by 60 by 3 plate, which is available here. And some wheels, again from S-Props, under the transportation tab, and they are the 30 diameter ones, available here. Okay. In this video, I'm going to be positioning props using precision alignment, which I didn't have available to me in the last one. It's an extremely powerful tool that does take some time to master, although it is worth it because it's extremely powerful and lets you pr pr it lets you position all of your props with precision and ease. The concept of precision alignment is that you can move props between points. You can see I've got point 1 defined on the inside center of this wheel here, and point 2 on the corner of this chassis. Unlike Smart Snap, it doesn't sit slightly away from the edge, but always perfectly in line with it. So I select the part where I want to move, which is the wheel, and in the menu I select point 1 as my first point to move from, and then point 2. And when I click the Move Entity button, it will move the selected entity here from point 1 over to point 2. I want to do this again with another wheel. So, point 1 on the wheel, and select it with the right mouse button, point 2 on the corner of the chassis. Move from point 1 to point 2. Same for the rear wheels. Now we want to space these wheels out a bit because they're too close to the chassis at the moment. So we can do this by using the points again. So on this corner of the wheel put point one and on this side put point two. Now on any of the wheels that we select uh, if we, when we press move, it will move it, the distance between those two props. Uh, it doesn't matter that if it's the wheel that the points are on is selected. So moving point 1 to point 2 will move it out one width. I want to do this to both on this side. And on this side, we want to move from point 2 to point 1, because we're going the other way. Okay, so our wheels are in place, and the next thing we need to do is place the blocks above them. So on the bottom center of the block, place a point. Point 1. Select the block with right mouse button and put point 2 on the top of the wheel. And then move it. Do the same for all of the other wheel, uh, other blocks. Oh, it should be worth noting, and I didn't think I said in the uh, the start of the video, that uh, you should always build facing from north to south, and uh, which is the y-axis. And this map, which is XS Construct, this is how the axes are laid out. I'll provide this model, which should always spawn the right way, as a file for Advanced Duplicator 2 in the comments. Okay, so the blocks are all above our wheels, but we want to move them up a bit. I'm going to move them up just one block. So, I'll spawn a block from S-Props. Blow it away with the gravity gun, or at least try. I'm going to put point 0.1 on the bottom, and point 0.2 on the top.
Oops. And holding shift and right clicking will repeat the action for whichever prop you select. Okay, we're done with positioning those props. Now it's just the center bar. We're going to position it in the mass center so that it doesn't sit above or below the chassis. So we'll be using the mass center um, point. So just go ahead and click it and it'll pop to the exact center of the thing. Select that and put point 2 in the center of the main chassis. And moving from point 1 to point 2, we'll make sure that they rotate around the same center. I'm going to use axis center to make an axis on the top face of the steering bar to the chassis. Which allows the bar to rotate only in this direction from the center. I'm going to weld all four of the suspension blocks to the chassis. And get rid of this block. Now we need to attach the wheels to the suspension block so that the suspension can do its job. Now, if you're lucky enough to be playing on a server or a single player and you have the ball socket center tool, you can use that. And you just click on the wheel and then click on the th a block and it will be done for you. But some servers I've seen, spe specifically the ones I play on, don't have this. So using precision alignment, if you go to the mass center tool, you place point 0.1 in the center of a wheel and point 0.2 in the block above it. Now press R and go to the constraints menu. Go to ball socket and select point 0.1. It is important that it's point 0.1 in the first entity window and point 0.2 in the second. Point 0.1 is the one that is free to rotate about and point two will be fixed in the direction that you give it. And click Create Constraint. Now repeat this for all of the other wheels. Making sure that point one is always in the center of the wheel. Okay, now we're ready to co constrain our wheels with uh, control arms. For this we'll be using precision, al precision alignment rope. So, with hip hole selected, point one we place in the back center of our chassis. Point two goes in the front center. Now select point three in the menu and mass center. And select a wheel. Now, with the constraints menu in the R menu for precision alignment, you go to rope. You make sure that rigid is ticked. That's important. You can set a width, which I will here, although I wouldn't usually because I don't like the way that they look. Now, select point 0.1 in the first window and point 0.3 in the second, so that it goes from point 0.1 to point 0.3. And click create constraint. You'll see that a rope's popped up between point 0.1 and point 0.3, and you can do the same thing between point 0.2 and point 0.3. And now, with mass center and point three selected, you can do the same easily and quickly to all of the other wheels. At this stage, we're going to want to make our wheels spherical so that they roll well because wheels as they appear in S-Props won't roll well and they'll, they'll skitter and bounce in Gmod because of the way the physics engine works. So, with the spherical collisions or make spherical tool, depending on which one you have, simply left click on each wheel and it will be turned into a perfect sphere. And we're done. What we need to do now is define how the wheels are able to move relative to the chassis. For this, we use the advanced ball socket tool. Now understanding how uh, axes work in Gmod is uh, kind of tough sometimes so I'll give you in the description this helpful model. Now, as you can see at the moment these are simply ball socketed to the arms and we're going to lock them down so that they only move in the direction that your wheels would if you gave them that uh, these values in advanced ball socket. So we're going to start with X and for this we want X minimum as minus 180 and maximum as 180 which means it's free to move or 360 degrees on the X axis and with the other ones lock them down with minus 0.01 and 0.01 I find sometimes that using values of 0 can cause spaz so I tend to not do that because this is 
This is good enough for most things. Make sure free movement is ticked and no collide should be ticked as well. It's important when using Bullsocket Advanced that the first entity you click will be the base entity. So for our car it will be the chassis and for this it will be the arm. So you click and then click on the thing you want to constrain. And as you can see now it will only move in the axis we want it to as our wheels would. You can do the same for Y. making Y minimum minus 180 and Y maximum 180 and clicking on the arm and the letter and the same for Z so for our rear wheels which don't steer we need to make sure that they're locked on everything but the X axis so ball socket advance from the chassis to the back wheel. Chassis to the back wheel. Now for our front wheels obviously we need them to steer which means giving them some movement in the z-axis so that they can rotate around. We don't want to give them too much though so I'm going to go ahead and give them values of minus 45 and 45 for z minimum and maximum. Click the chassis and the wheel, chassis, wheel. I'm also going to go chassis to steering bar so that the steering bar is also limited on how far it can turn. And now the final ball sockets will control how the wheels turn relative to the steering bar and obviously we want them to go in the same direction as it. So we're going to go minus 0.01 0.01 This will lock them in the same direction as the steering bar so that you go where you're pointing it. Now with our ball sockets done we should be able to duplicate the chassis and check that everything moves as we're expecting it to. So the rear wheels spin but can't turn and the front wheels will turn with the steering bar but only up to 45 degrees each way. Good. This is the basis of most chassis that you'll see around although some of them will use hydraulics uh, some of them will use expression instead of steering bars to turn. For this chassis, however, I'm going to be using wire hydraulics. So, in wire under wire physics, you're looking for hydraulic. Make sure fixed is unticked, and you can set the width to whatever you want. From the center of the steering bar to the center front of the chassis, then place your controller in that corner. And do the same for the other side. Center of the bar, center of the chassis, place the controller. Now we need something to control those hydraulics and I've provided an expression too in the comments uh, which you'll be able to use to do it for you. So go ahead and place it on the chassis. You'll also need an advanced pod controller. Now we're ready to wire this up. So with your wiring tool link the wire link on the chip to the create wire link uh, entity on the pod controller. The left hydraulic controller should be connected to the L output. The right one to the right output. Now our chassis should now our chassis should be able to steer. And you're going to want a Jeep seat or some sort of seat to control it from. I'm going to use precision alignment to put it in the center of the chassis. Making sure hip pulse is ticked because that didn't work. I'm also going to nudge it up just a little bit. And weld it on. I'm going to link the advanced pod controller to it. We should be able to test our chassis to see if the steering works as we'd expected. And it does. Now we're ready to make it go vroom. So, in the ACF menu, under mobility and engines, find a small i4 and I'm going to use the 1.6 litre diesel. 
and to gearboxes, I'm going to use a four speed transaxial small gearbox. Thank you, dear. And place them on the chassis. Oh, dear. I'm going to nudge that back a bit because it's stuck in the seat at the moment. And I'm going to place this using mass center at the rear of the chassis here. And I'm going to weld both of those on. Now with the ACF tool, link the engine to the gearbox by right clicking on the gearbox to each of the back wheels. Now we can wire them up. Wire active from the engine to active on the pod controller and throttle to the throttle output on the chip. Wire gear up to any button on the pod controller that you want. I like to use mouse one and gear down to mouse two. Wire clutch to the clutch output on the chip and brake on the brake output. Now all we need to do is no collide all of the parts just in case. So tools, no collide, just right click on anything that you think might hit something else. And that should be it. We should be ready to go. Except, of course, for the weights. We make sure that our chassis is nice and heavy so all of the bits welded to it don't flop about. I'm going to be using 250 for the chassis, 150 for the steering bar, the S-Props wheels are 100 by default, and I'm going to be using a value of just one for each of the steering uh, suspension blocks, so we have nice soft suspension. There's just one more thing to do, and that's to give the tyres a little bit more grip. So, in the developer console, type fizzprop underscore material jeep tyre, and press enter. And then, with the physical properties tool, you'll see both of the boxes are blank. Make sure gravity toggle is ticked, and then just go ahead and click on all four of your tyres. Now, with a bit of luck, our car should be ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and any comments or questions you have, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try and post a link of all of the mods and uh, tools I've used in the, uh, the um, description along with the expression 2 and the advanced duplicator file for that axis um, model. Thanks for watching.